Okay, we're going to continue the basic skill sets that we need for navigation plotting. We're going to need to be able to measure items on a nautical chart, and specifically we're going to measure angular measurement and distances. And then we're going to need to be able to do some basic calculations, some basic arithmetic. So a quick review, how do we measure things in our Mercator projection or Mercator chart? We need to be able to measure direction and distance. Okay, when we measure angles, we can use the compass rows that's, rows that's going to be printed on the chart. The outer ring is always referenced to true north, so that's the true outer ring. The inner ring is always referenced to magnetic north, and we're never going to use that one. And we can also determine variation from inside the compass rows. Now for Coast Guard questions, they're going to give us the magnetic variation, and we're going to use whatever they give us for the problems that we're trying to solve. We're not going to use the variation that's in the center of the compass rows on the training chart. So again, quick review of how do we measure things in a Mercator chart. Uh, if we had uh, two fixes there, we see a 9 o'clock fix and a 1045 fix, and we can use parallel rulers to line up uh, with the two fixes and then walk the parallel rulers to the nearest compass rows and then read from the outside of the compass rows. So that would give us our true course in that case. And then our, again, our distances and our Mercator chart, we're always going to measure them on the latitude scale. And uh, one minute of latitude equals one nautical mile. And we can use our compass or dividers to walk those distances off so we can measure distances. We're only going to use the latitude scale, never the longitude scale. The next skill that we need to be able to do is the DST calculations, or that's the distance, speed, and time calculations. Now, if we have two of the variables, we can always find that they're the third variable. You know, it's a basic formula. Distance equals speed times time. Distance will always be done in nautical miles. Speed will always be done in knots, which is nautical miles per hour. And then the time can be done in hours. But it's typically easier to do it in minutes for the questions that we'll see on the Coast Guard exam. When we do enter the time in the minutes, then we have to divide it by 60, so that will give us the decimal equivalent of an hour. In other words, if we put 30 minutes in for time and we divide it by 60, that would be 0.5. 30 minutes would be 0.5 of an hour. Very obvious to everybody. And then if we want to solve for speed, it would equal 60 d divided by time. And again, time would be in minutes. If we wanted to find the time, it would be 60 times distance divided by speed. And that's the formula way of doing it. Some folks like the DST table, as you can see in that little box there. And it's actually the 60 DST table. So it would be 60 times D. And then you can see that the 60 times D is over the S and T. So if you were solving for D, it would be d equals speed times time divided by 60. Likewise, if we were solving for speed, it would be 60 times d divided by t. Likewise, if we were solving for time, it would be 60 times distance divided by speed. All right, let's try the first problem. So in this problem, we're going to find the distance traveled. And it reads, a ship's speed is 15 knots how far will it travel in 20 minutes? Okay, so it's asking for a distance. It's giving us a speed of 15 knots and it's giving a time of 20 minutes. See how it's easier to use minutes? So if we use the formula solution, it would be distance equals speed times time divided by 60. We plug in 15 for speed, 20 for time, divided by 60. Basic arithmetic gets us out to five nautical miles. That's the formula way of doing it. If we want to use the 60 DST table solution, we can see that we plug in 15 for speed, 20 for time, and then we solve for D. So distance equals 15 times 20 divided by 60, and that would equal 300 divided by 60, and that is the equivalent of five nautical miles. When you do your calculations, it's easier to just continue to show all the work all the way through. Uh, this way it'll help you 
error check the problems. The second type of problem is let's find the speed. So a ship travels 7 miles in 30 minutes, what is the speed? In this case we're given the distance, 7 nautical miles, we need to find the speed, and the time is given to us again in 30 minutes. So the formula solution would be speed equals 50 times the distance divided by the time. So that is 60 times 7 divided by 30 or 14 knots. If we do the table solution method, we have 60, we plug in 7 for distance, we don't know speed, we know time is 30, so the speed would equal 60 times 7 divided by 30 equals 420 divided by 30 or 14 knots. In this question, we're going to find the time it takes to travel a certain distance. A ship's speed is 8 knots. How long will it take to travel 6 nautical miles? So the distance equals 6 nautical miles, the speed is 8 knots. How long does that take? If we do the formula solution, time equals 60 times the distance divided by the speed. So 60 times 6 divided by 8, or 45 minutes. See how the answer comes out in minutes for us. And again, most of the problems that we're going to look at will work nicely when you deal with minutes. And that's why we do the 60 DST. And if we do the 60 DST table, you can see we plug in 6 for our distance, 8 for our speed, we solve for time. So time would equal 60 times 6 divided by 8, and that would be the equivalent of 360 over 8 or 45 minutes. Again, it works out nicely for minutes.